we're going to take a look at a lovely little follow-on from De Marvaux's theorem now, and that's thinking about the symmetry of roots. Now you already know a little bit about this um, in terms of when you're looking for roots of polynomials and that you have them come in conjugate pairs. So if you know that you have a complex number as one of your roots, you know that it's conjugate is also a root. This is a little bit different though. This is particularly thinking about finding um, like cubed roots, uh, fourth roots, square roots, that kind of root. That's what we're talking about here. So something like this, where we're told that there's a complex number z where um, z to the power of 4 is 4 plus 3i. So if we wanted to work out what z is, we'd need to take the fourth root of it. Let's just investigate what happens when we do that. So z to the power of 4 looks like this. If we make that little triangle, and we're going to put it in um, polar form so that we can use De Marvoy's theorem on it because we've got that power happening. So the modulus of it would be 5 just with simple Pythagoras and using tan we can work out theta is 36.9. So if we turn that into polar form that gives us 5 cis 36.9 that we're going to do to the power of a quarter. De Marvoy's theorem tells us that we can do the modulus to the power of a quarter and then times the argument by a quarter. And that gives us our root um, of what z to the power of 4 So z would have to be 1.495 cis 9.2. But this was to the power of 4, and we know that if it's to the power of 4, it needs to have four roots. So we need to find some more of them. Similar to what you do with um, trig graphs when you look for multiple solutions within your range. So if we take a look at our diagram again, we could find an equivalent to z to the 4 if we rotated through a whole extra 360 degrees. So if we made the argument 360 plus 36.9, we would still get to the same spot with a modulus of 5, but this time the argument would be equal to 396.9. And then we follow through the working, that gives us our second solution. So we need to now look for the third and the fourth, and for that we're just going to rotate twice more round. So um, if we do two whole lots and then our uh, 36.9, that'll be 720 plus 36.9, gives us the uh, root with 189.2 as the argument and follow through the same working, but this time rotate three times round and then add on your 36.9. You can keep going until you have enough roots. And we know we want four of them. So we've got that now. There's just one small thing we need to fix up. And that's knowing that um, the arguments that we talk about, we should be talking about the principal arguments. And that goes between uh, negative 180 degrees and positive 180. Of course, these could be in radians as well, in which case it would be minus pi and pi. So instead of that 189.2 that's going over the 180, we need to write it in terms of the angle that's underneath. So that would be a minus 170.8. And the 279.2 becomes minus 80.8. Now we can tidy this up a little bit. If we just go back to this point where we started thinking about making those extra turns, and we can write this in a general form like this. So it'll be three, 30, the 36.9 adding on however many lots of 360 we need to do to find the roots that we need to find. So in this case, we needed to um, do k as nothing first, and then we needed to do k was 1, 2, and 3. k is just like a counter. Um, and it's counting how many extra turns you're going to make to find all the, the roots that you need. If you make too many of them, you'll just end up repeating your solution. So it's not a biggie. So now if we look at what that would give us, we've got the four roots. We could get to kind of a bit faster. So if we go back to what those roots were and have a think about what they look like on the Argan diagram, you'll notice something interesting happening. So our first solution ends up in, there in the first quadrant. The second solution's got a 99.2 degrees. Um, they've all got the same modulus. They're all 1.495. The third one goes to an angle of um, minus 170.8 and the fourth one at minus 80.8. You should be able to spot these are rotating around that diagram by 90 degrees, which happens to be the 360 divided by 4 in this case, 
um, but in the general case it'll be divided by the number of roots that we were looking for. And that comes from the fact that we were doing 360 added on as many times as we needed to to find our roots. That will always come back to this 360 divided by the number of roots tells us that angle of symmetry as we're going around the diagram. So our diagram will end up with rotational symmetry with the same order as the number of roots that we're looking for. Now let's see this in an application, because we can use this to adv our advantage to save a lot of time if we're asked to find roots. So for example, find the cubed root of 8. So z is some complex number, um, and when it's cubed it makes 8. So what could z be? Well first of all, we know the, the obvious one is 2. You already know that in the, the real um, numbers, but now that we've got complex numbers included as well, we can find our other two roots, because in total there should be three roots if we're cubing something. So there should be two more. Now if we think about it on an Argan diagram, that first solution is going to be there at the two. Knowing that there are three roots and that they end up being symmetrical around um, our Argan diagram, we can now just do 360 de degrees by divided by 3, it gives us 120, so our next one will be over there with a modulus of 2 and an argument of 120. And our last one will be over here, where we go under by 120, or another 120 round from the previous one, doesn't matter, it gets you to the same place. Now we've got a modulus of 2 and an argument of negative 120. Much faster. Alright, so thanks for watching, hopefully that helped you, and if you found that useful, do us both a favour and click on subscribe.